It's been far too long since I've made an actual video on the channel, but you'll be glad to know that I've been working on absolutely nothing. So what have I been doing over the past four months? I bought a PS4. So I know what you're thinking, why would you buy a PS4 at this time specifically? Why not just buy a PS5? And that's a great question. The answer is I have no money because I spent it all on green screens and miniature globes. Also PS5s are still hard to get hold of and cost about three times as much as a PS4. So that clears that up, but I haven't actually answered the question in the title yet. And to do that we're going to need to travel back to a simpler time. Back in 2017, I basically played nothing but handheld games, and my handheld of choice was the new 3DS XL. It was a great system and one that I was planning on keeping for a little while longer so I could buy some of the new games coming out later that year. Well, that wasn't until a certain got released. I spent the next 8 months or so convincing myself that I didn't need a Switch, until I eventually cracked in November and sold all my 3DS stuff to get one. Buying the Switch was definitely the right move, with some of my favourite games of all time being on there. But over time I was noticing that there were an increasing number of titles that were getting released on other consoles that looked really, really good. And so I devised a plan to buy a PS4. Which brings us back to today. The PS4 and Xbox One generation has ended. And so I fulfilled my plan and bought a PS4 Slim with some of my most anticipated games. The first game I bought was of course Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Being such a big fan of the series, it was the game that brought me the closest to considering buying a PS4 over a Switch back in 2017 with its original release. I'm only about 12 hours in, but so far it's incredible. The leap from Generations Ultimate to this is huge, not just visually, but in the gameplay as well. There are too many changes to cover, but what I will say is that the overall gameplay feels more streamlined thanks to the numerous quality of life additions. As for whether I like this more than the previous entries though, that's a bit of a tricky question. It's so different from classic Monster Hunters that I can't quite tell which style I prefer yet. And from the looks of things, Monster Hunter Rise will be a blend of the two styles, so I'll have to wait and see what that's like. The next game I got was Marvel's Spider-Man. It's got all your typical open world stuff, such as activating towers, billions of glowing collectibles on the map, and story missions for you to ignore while you're busy collecting pigeons around New York. The main thing about Spider-Man for me was its consistently fun gameplay, especially the movement and web mechanics. Come to think of it, there wasn't really any point that I wasn't having a good time, which shows just how well balanced the overall game is. It even managed to get me to 100% complete the game, something that I practically never do. I've been thinking about giving the sequel a try at some point, so if you've played it, let me know what you think. Uncharted The Nathan Drake Collection is up next. So far I've played the first one and I'm about halfway through the second one. The Uncharted series has always looked really good to me, but I've never had a chance to play the main titles because they were on this garbage machine. Luckily they were slapped onto a compilation disc for clowns like me to enjoy. The mix of puzzle solving, platforming and shooting is well balanced, but the story, not quite so much. I'm not gonna lie, I was able to follow along until about two thirds of the way in when people started turning into alien zombies in a submarine. Overall though, it was pretty good. But the second game is so much better. Bigger set pieces, more interesting environments, more varied levels. I definitely prefer it so far, so let's hope that nothing weird happens in the story like the ancient drumstick of destiny turning people into undead chickens. As for the third game, I haven't tried it yet, but I've heard it's not as good as two. But I'll let you know what I think about all three on Twitter when I beat them all. It's time for the game that I basically bought the console for. With the exception of Monster Hunter World, my most anticipated game was Persona 5. When I think about it, I knew next to nothing about the game when I bought it. All I knew was that it was one of the best JRPGs ever made, and that it was where that anime guy from Smash was from. The fact that I bought this game purely based off of word of mouth praise, and its extremely positive recommendations from everyone that I talked to, is a testament to just how good it is. Anyway, I was told to get the Royal version, which is an updated version with more content and some other changes, and it is 100% living up to the hype. It's genuinely one of the most fun experiences I've played recently, but I'm not entirely sure why. A lot of similar mechanics have been used in countless other titles, such as turn-based combat, social interactions, and dungeon crawling, but everything combined just works so well. The characters are memorable and likeable. Except Morgana, who just won't shut up about you going to sleep. The overall presentation is the best I've seen, and that music is a permanent fixture in my Smash lobbies. I'm really looking forward to progressing further, and if it carries on as it is right now, which I'm sure it will, it will easily become one of my favourite games. It's also worth mentioning that most, if not all, free-to-play games on the PlayStation Store do not require a PS Plus account in order to play them online. This is great for me as my PC is a joke of a machine and I can't run a lot of these games such as Apex and Warzone. And let's be real, I'm not wasting 25 gigabytes, almost one-fifth of my entire Switch storage on Apex Legends, so that left me with the option of downloading them on PlayStation. I'm not really a huge Battle Royale fan, I'm more of a wasting my life playing Hearthstone kind of guy. 
so I never really played these much before. But you know what they say, there's no time like the present to become an eSports pro. Another great thing about the PS4 is the pricing of games. Games will frequently go on sale, and they recently started giving away free full games to everyone. But the best thing I've seen so far are PlayStation hits. These are a selection of the best PS4 games that have been made available for a reduced price. Whilst most of these are older games that have been out for quite a few years, they are definitely still worth picking up, especially at that price. I've bought a few of these such as Shadow of Mordor, GT Sport and Metal Gear Solid 5, but all of these are in fact discounted even further in additional sales. For example, I got Metal Gear for just £3. This is something I wish the Switch had, just a great selection of games that came out 2-3 to three years ago for a much cheaper price. I don't expect them to start selling Smash Ultimate for a fiver, but I think that a few of the earlier games could be reduced in price a bit. It could happen in a way similar to the way that Nintendo Selects used to, and I really hope they do, but I have a feeling that we might have to wait a little while before we even get a chance of that. The reality is that these games are still selling like crazy, and Nintendo will no doubt want to maintain higher base prices to capitalise on this. But who knows, maybe one day they'll change their minds. Okay, let's move on to some things that didn't quite fit anywhere else in the video. Firstly, storage space, or lack thereof. At first I thought that my 500GB internal storage would be more than enough to last me a good while. I quickly found out, however, that this was not the case after downloading only a few games. I hadn't really considered it before, but games on PS4 are way bigger than Switch games. Your average Switch game is about 5 to 10 gigabytes, with particularly large ones being over 15. Your average PS4 game can be anywhere from 20 gigabytes to well over 100. This meant that my 500 gigabytes filled up almost immediately, and I decided to buy a 2 terabyte external hard drive to make sure that this problem didn't happen again. But it's not just digital purchases that need downloading, it's disc-based games as well. That was another surprising thing to learn, as all other consoles I'd had didn't need to do this. This sort of thing happens on the Switch occasionally. For example, Final Fantasy X had to download the second game to the console. But for 90% of the Switch games, you can just put the cartridge right in and play instantly. It's not a huge problem now I have my hard drive, but it definitely didn't help when all I had was the internal storage to work with. And then there's the lack of portability. As mentioned previously, I've always liked playing portably, or at least having the option to, and obviously the PS4 doesn't have that. Well, unless you count remote play, but I can never get that to work properly. The fact that I can't take Persona 5 on the go is a bit of a shame, but overall, it doesn't really matter. It just means that I will tend to buy cross-platform games on Switch where I can for the extra utility. And so, to end off the video, let's answer the question. Why did I buy a PS4 in 2021? It's literally just Persona and Monster Hunter. So that about wraps up my experiences with the PS4. If you have any recommendations, please do let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I put a lot of effort into this, so if you've made it this far, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.